One, two, three, here we go. We're on. So today in Res 502, our second Zoom of the season, semester one, 2018. Today's date is 19th of March, 2018. Uh, I would love to have a chat about the literature review. And I'm so grateful that we've got Stephen Codrington as well, who's got his own take on literature review, I'm sure. So how about I just uh, give a few introductory comments and then shoot over for you to ask any questions. Um, in topic three on the Moodle page, you will see the um, section on literature review and um, conceptual framework. Now, I think, although I put that together myself, I think it's pretty good. I particularly love the North Carolina State University video. Um, I smile every time I listen to the phrase the Americans say in literature review. Um, but I, I think it's nice and calm and it gives a wonderful background. So if you've not watched that, then please do. Um, the other thing I would say in introduction is please get going now even if you've got a moment a small moment between now and next week get into some literature and you're not going to write a literature review before next week the intensive um but of course not but at least i would hope you would get your head into the space of what one is you could if you like take a literature review and stand it on its own as a piece of research but what you're doing is you're focusing the literature review on your topic. So you might have a vague, just, just emerging idea of your topic, and then you go off and do some reading, and then that will inform your vague idea, and then it will inform your reading, and then it will inform your idea. So it's a bit like a seesaw, and eventually you will find a balance, which hopefully is a fantastic project just for you. Um, and I'll finish what I, my preamble by saying the actual topic, usually, we've, we discussed this last time, is usually far too big. Uh, that's human nature. That's just the way things happen. So you have to chop it down and make it bite size. It's not an unachievable project for this semester. It is doable. I believe every one of you can do it. And I'm looking forward very much to working with you on that. Um, I will then, I would, I would stress that if you can find a uh, topic that will hit your greatest fear in teaching, that might be really therapeutic. So um, I was asking somebody the other day, what's your greatest fear? Off the top of your head, tell me. And they did. Okay, well, why don't you focus your reading into that? There's a topic straight away. You need to be um, informed more and more and more. So therefore, go and read up on your biggest fear in teaching. And lo and behold, you will have a project. That's me. Over to Stephen or anybody to come back and correct question. Off you go. Not, not, not a lot to add to that. That, that, was, that was very good advice. Um, I mean, back, <laughs> here I go, back in the day when I was doing all this sort of research, um, it was not an easy exercise. It involved spending hours in the library, browsing on shelves, going through uh, hard copies of journals, um, looking at indexes, hoping that in some serendipitous way, you might come across something that was relevant. And as a result of that, a number of the references that we used were sort of peripherally relevant because you were so desperate to get something, <laughs> even, even references that didn't really hit the target got included. Yeah. You have an easier task, but because of that, the expectations arguably are a little bit higher. Um, you're all, I'm sure, familiar with EBSCO and the, ver and the databases there. Um, my suggestion would be, of course, to use them um, because that's going to save you a mountain of time. Um, 
my other suggestion would be when you're using EBSCO, start with searches that are a bit broader than the topic you've got in mind. Because, say, for example, you were doing something that's related to, I, I don't know, preschool age children. Don't go too narrow with the age when you do the search. Because it could be that something not relating to that age, but relating to your uh, subject area comes up. And if you filter it too narrowly, you'll miss out on that. The other advantage is you may find something really good that's a little bit away from your topic. And at this stage, you haven't set your topic in concrete. So you've actually got a little bit of potential for uh, modifying it if you read something that takes your fancy and just gives you a new idea. Don't, don't think you've done all your thinking before the literature review. Use the literature review to fine tune your thinking and um, be prepared to adapt the topic. You might get something that's both more useful and more interesting. So keep a bit of an open mind at that stage. And um, look, I'm gonna come straight back at you. When you've done your EBSCO and you find some um, papers to read, um, we have the superb advantage of having a, an abstract right at the top of each article. So mm. scan the abstract. If it's going to get you nowhere, just drop it. Move on. Uh, please don't feel you have to wade through old papers. And uh, I would only ever go to the paper itself if I felt the abstract was going to lead me somewhere. And I would yes. probably go to the conclusion first, then work backwards. Mm. Okay. Can I ask a question, Jim, of, yeah. of you? What would be your expectation of um, the number of books ah. or articles that, like, do you, do you have a target in mind? How do you approach uh, that? No, um, I was actually thinking of that as well. The thing is, when uh, you and I had to do PhDs, the, 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 the yardstick was, thou hast to read all the literature on a topic. And if mm. you didn't, then arguably you were not ready yeah. for your PhD. Yeah. You're doing a master's, you're doing one subject out of 16. It is in and amongst three other subjects this semester. It's got to be a condensed edition, if you like, of research. And therefore, you do what you can. It depends on your topic. There might be a lot to read about it if you've chosen a pretty commonly researched topic. But if it's quite obscure, there won't be so much. Well, don't panic. Just do what is within you. And if I would to say, I'd say this as well. You're doing a whole bunch of other subjects. Most of you have done a load of subjects already. You will have made notes on stuff. You will have good referencing of material you've already read. So go back through your old notes. You don't have to start from a clean sheet of paper and only include what you read this year. You may include what you've read two years ago or even three years ago. So, um, you know, be wise. I'm very conscious that this is one subject in four and you're very busy people. Some of you are doing placements. Uh, you've got families, you've got work. It's a huge ass, I know that. Um, we're gonna try and help you be um, efficient with your time. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, oh, you did well, you so raised I your did... hand, just like the classroom. Well done. <laughs> Sorry, my internet is a bit slow, so I had to change rooms. That's why it's a bit dark in here. Okay. Um, but so I did when I I did a thesis before, and when we did a, a literature review, it was all about finding a hole in the research and then doing. Um, a research project that I guess met that hole, filled that hole. Um, I, I'm getting the feeling that action research is a little bit different. And um, if, because I have this idea and it's like, it's been researched a lot of times, but because it's something on yourself, then if that's like a hole that's in yourself that you're trying to fill, then is that okay if it's already been done in the research before? Oh, so really, you landed well. You landed really well, I think. Um, no, you don't have to have original research 
other than the fact that it's original on you um, okay. because it's designed to help you. I mean, in the end of the day, we want to put a kit bag in your hand and send you out equipped to teach. That's our heart. We want you to survive. We want you to thrive. We want you to flourish. So that's the whole focus. It's not a traditional piece of research, no. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and, and just to add to that, the aim is not to find a hole in the research. The aim is mm. to gather a greater sense of wisdom, I guess, about the research that other people have done so that you can mm. do what they, all great researchers do, um, which is not plagiarise, that was Steve Jobs, um, which is to stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before. So it means that you've got some sense of, um, you know, what has happened elsewhere, uh, the idea being that it will then inform the work that you do in the classroom for your, uh, for your research. It means that if others have made mistakes, you can learn from them rather than repeat them type thing. Yeah, excellent. Okay, cool. Your turn, Mary. Thank you, Jim. Hi, Stephen. Lovely to meet you. Hi, Mary. It's nice to see your face. I've, I've, seen, I've seen these wonderful posts that you've been putting in, in, the, oh. uh, in the news forum. So it's, it's nice to know that there's a human being behind it and it's not some <laughs> bot program that's doing it all. <laughs> no, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I found that out, yeah. <laughs> so my question is about the format and delivery of this literature review. From what I've read on Moodle, we don't actually have to submit a review, but that it can form up to 50% of the final report content potentially. So am I correct in saying once we've done all the literature review, it's refined what we, our topic is and perhaps given us a bit more of a direction to go in, we then use that literature review material to reference when we're writing the report. So am I, am I understanding that the report has to include referencing throughout? So whatever we make um, suggestions about or claims to, we need supporting evidence of through the final report. So we'll have a full reference bibliography at the end of the report. Yeah, you, you, and, and, and you reference where it's relevant. I mean, the, the basic test is, is it relevant? If you're doing it because you think we like lots of references, to be honest, our happiness doesn't really depend on that in life. We have other things to make us happy. Um, so, so the test is, is it relevant? By, by adding this reference, is it adding meaning and is it adding substance? to the argument that I'm making? If the answer is yes, you include it. If not, move on. Okay. okay. Um, I, I would say when you, what was in my mind when I wrote those notes, uh, Mary, is that I would love to feel that you can get a, a head steam of writing. You don't have to put that off until the end of May and hand the whole thing in at the beginning of June. Ah, impossible, can't do this. Um, try and get some paragraphs, some pages, some okay. five, ten pages of stuff maybe uh, written sooner than later. Yes, it will get refined. Uh, the other thing I would say is that when you do your actual data gathering and you compare, uh, you, you analyze the results, you would be very silly if you didn't reference back to the literature. Uh, okay. If you had a literature pile over here that was um, discreet in itself and full of integrity, fine. But oh. then your research didn't bear any relation to it, it would be very silly. And as Stephen says, um, it would be there for, for show. The whole point is you've got to set your research in a context and make it um, justified. Okay. Or, oh, this is... You never know, you may come up with something which is absolutely wonderful. And we're going to say to you, look, will you please refine this when you've graduated? And will you please publish it? Because the world needs to know. I mean, mm. this would be fantastic. And let's pray for that, um, that you can make a contribution to teaching, Christian teaching at that. Um, okay. But don't get hung up if you don't actually discover the next Einstein. 
no pressure. No pressure. Um, so a question then, in terms of the literature review, I'm assuming I'm going to find, it's going to be a critical analysis, so I'm going to find supporting literature and opposing literature. When I write the final report, am I expected to take a persuasive stance in the way that I'm writing it, or am oh. I meant to be objective in the delivery? Uh, <laughs> Stephen, you, you hit that one. I, my feeling is that the stance you take on the literature will depend on the results of your own action research. Yeah. Um, you're right, you're right. You, you hope that you will find um, counter arguments or you know, d competing points of view. That's good because that, that kind of makes you aware of the issues. But to my mind, the literature review sets you up to you know, fine tune your experimental design, uh, give you an idea of the key issues that you might be looking for. But I wouldn't be passing judgment on the literature until you've done your own research. Um, because then in a sense, that, that's, that, that's your test as, yes. as to the relevance. Now, you'll also have to take context into account Say, for example, you've got uh, an article which talks about exactly what you are wanting to do, but it's in the context of a state school in India, okay? Um, the mere fact that you're doing it in a different environment does make it interesting. Um, you know, if you were to follow through the same experimental design, apply it in a different cultural context, that potentially does give you a publishable article because it's, it's taking another idea and applying it in a new context. Um, but it might be that what you're doing is simply uh, doing something that is taking into account these two different competing points of view you're putting into practice. And at the end of that, I suspect one of them will seem more persuasive to you than the other. The way I'd handle that is go back to the literature and say, my action research uh, supports argument, you know, the arguments put forward by A, B, C, D, E. It doesn't seem to support the arguments put forward by X, Y, Z, but the reason for that might be, and then you might talk about the resourcing of the school, uh, the age of the students, the context that you're working with, all sorts of things. And so the, the, the valuable reflection on the, on the literature is the way that you can explain how your outcomes were different to the outcomes of the review. It doesn't mean that that other uh, research was wrong, but there'll, there'll be some sort of variable, and most likely several variables, that will help explain it. And identifying those different variables is not only valuable to you as, as, as training to be a teacher, it actually could have wider significance in adding to um, the, the, the wider um, the wider literature, potentially. Okay. Fantastic. Um, Thank you. Stephen, I've just uh, had a reflection on what you're saying. We're asking our students to dip their toe and start wading into the literature around a topic that can be theirs. Yes. Why not encourage the students to get in there and read up on action research in your topic mm. and I wouldn't be surprised if you actually find some master's projects that people have done around the world action research projects on exactly what you want to do that's a good thought and then mm. you've done two things you have fine-tuned your understanding of what action research is and you've done a literature review mm. as well so you've hit two goals with one hole um, sorry, I've mucked up my analogies, but yeah. see what I mean? You are strengthening yourself in your art. And then if you find, as Stephen says, that context was an American Christian school with no funding and it was blah, blah, such a place. It's very different from a state school in Sydney. And, and you, and you are totally different from that person who did it. And yet the actual idea might be the same. So, yeah. or very similar. So I think that's uh, very exciting and I look forward to seeing your literature review. Yeah, I mean, you may or may not find it, but, uh, but it, it, I agree with Jim. It, it's worth the effort to try and find something 
and the fact that you do have access to these online databases gives you confidence that if it exists somewhere, you're likely to find it. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, just a throwaway, well, it sounds terrible to say it's a throwaway, but we are talking about um, setting an action research in a Christian context. Um, even if you're teaching in a state school, um, you're a Christian, um, a person of faith. Um, I'm, I'm looking at who's on the uh, screen today. Uh, there may be people who are of different faiths in our group. Um, I haven't checked. But wouldn't it be good to put um, the worldview, the, the, the whole, your whole being into your action research? You're not divorcing your actions from your true self. Be totally true to yourself. And if you've got, uh, you've all got a spiritual journey of some sort and you're somewhere along it, let this be a major journey on your, um, major chapter on your journey. Shania. Hey. Welcome. Oh, she, she you see it. me. I, I can see you guys, but it's not coming up on my screen. So. No, we back. can only see your name. Have you okay. chopped your uh, camera off? There's a button in the bottom left that says activate camera or video, uh, begin video. <laughs> um, no, there's not. I'm on an iPad, so it's a bit of a different. Oh, thing. you and your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see you, so it's fine. <laughs> no worries. You're very welcome. We've got about five minutes to go. So um, yeah, anybody, uh, and you can go back, obviously, and listen to the, um, the recording later. Um, yeah. So I better shut up and give you time to, to ask any questions. Oh, I'm happy to listen in for the moment. Sorry, I just got home after on the train sort of thing. So I haven't okay. really had time to. Um, but yes, just listening in to the discussions and Good trying you. to get. <laughs> so Jim, can I just clarify, because you said there in a previous comment, I look forward to seeing your literature review. Um, so do, do you want us to submit some form of literature review on the blog, on the um, news forum? Well, it doesn't, I don't believe it says so. No, um, it doesn't. When I wrote um, the context of Moodle, it was for just me. And now we have Stephen Coddington joining us as well. And we're going to divvy you up into different people. So I would suggest, um, I haven't asked Stephen this, but certainly for me, I would probably think it would be good for you to take a copy of your literature review in draft form um, along the way um, for either he or myself to look at, depending on who's uh, helping you with your project. Yeah, I, think, I think the key words are in draft form um, because you, you shouldn't think it's setting concrete at that stage. It may be that uh, as your topic becomes fine-tuned, the balance of your literature review might might change. I, ju I just add that comment. Yeah. Okay. So in the final report, there's not a section called a literature review, well, is why there? Why not? Yes, I hope so. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was just to incorporate those references throughout. Oh, okay. So they I actually need. Okay. Have okay. you have you looked at the the two? documents which are actually labeled edu 501 and 502 the example action researchers no the, no. the the notes from me from way back they're at the top of the moodle page the ones that that are labeled under your name part a and part b yes yes i have yeah but in there you should find a the approximate headings, the section headings of a typical action research. It's not set in stone, but it's certainly to be advised. Um, you've got some introduction, you've got some context, you may have a conceptual framework, you have your in literature review, you have your methodology, you have your data collection, you have your data analysis, and you have your conclusion. So it's, it's pretty, a uh, common, uh, a common format, um, and it really takes the the worry out of how to structure the thing. 
you don't have to come up with some newfangled, oh, how should we structure this thing? No, it's pretty much set. Mm. Okay. Okay. And you also included those exemplars of the previous students and their outlines as well. So Yeah, some are a little strong. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they, they're not intended to make you feel, ah, they're intended to give you an example. Okay. Now that's good. Aim high. Why not? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Jim. Um, so I just had a question about the, the Christian worldview. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background. I apologize. Um, I was wondering whose dog it was. It's Which my dog. Sorry. Dog. We're fine. Keep going. She's a you have a minute. Two. Okay. So, so with the Christian worldview, um, again, can we just thread that through the report and, and, and touch on that at different aspects of the data research and how we feel as an effective teacher so we can keep ranking references all the way through? It's not one. Yeah, don't okay. force it. Just let it come naturally. I'll, all I was doing is don't be sidetracked into a purely secular approach just because the literature you're reading may well be focused from a humanistic point of view. It's fun, it's real great fun to take those theories, that's my view, and see how we can massage them and apply them to a Christian worldview. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and but I'd also add one other point, I guess, which is that when you do that, be conscious and aware that you're doing it, and, you know, a, a, acknowledge that. So in other words, um, I mean, every every piece of writing, will have its own particular perspective or slant or whatever. Acknowledge that when, you, when you're writing it. Excellent. Um, okay, I just want to come back to, I think, Mary's point about where this literature review sits. I've got an imagination that 8,000 words across is your whole thing. That's the longest piece of work anybody's got to do uh, in the Masters. And at least, at least, 4,000 could be your literature review, which could include a review of your methodology as well. It's not just the theory theory, but it would be how you've got to do the methodology that you're doing. Um, so it sort of, it can stand alone. It's done, it can, doesn't need the actual research that you're going to add to it and build on it. I believe it doesn't have to be half, though, does it? See, no. to my to my mind, half sounds a little on the long side. Um, you're saying that's a maximum, not an expectation. Oh yes, yes, yeah. I'm just saying to encourage people; they haven't got to write eight thousand on their own research. Yes, yeah. yeah, right. No, there's a, a considerable chunk of of writing and analysis to do on what's already been done. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to pull the plug. Um, some of you have to go and find um, a life. I have to go and prepare for another and let the dog out, I think. Sorry? I said, and let the dog out by the sound yes, of it. Yes, by the sound of it. The <laughs> possums. And feed oh. the animals. Okay. <laughs> okay, God bless. Thank you so much. God bless Bye. everyone. Good luck, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.